From portion sizes to mineral content, we wanted to find out all the differences between bottled water in the US and the UK. Due to the massive amount of bottled water brands and sizes, we've narrowed it down to the most common sizes in the UK. 500 milliliters, 750 milliliters, 1 liter, 1.5 liters, 2 liters, 5 liters. Typically, you'll see these in a very wide bottle with a handle attached to the lid, although this one is more of a fridge pack. The most popular still water bottle sizes in the US are down here, the eight fluid ounces usually come in packs of 12 or 24. The 12 fluid ounce also usually comes in packs. The 16.9 fluid ounces, 20 fluid ounces, one liter, that would jump up to a gallon. And this big boy, the 2.5 gallon, the Arrowhead, almost double the size of the UK's biggest. Of course, we are a hydrated country over here. Not sure if this one counts, but also we were able to find a 10 liter hydration pack. This one's cool because it's got a tap built into it. Bringing back horrible memories of boxed wine. It's really convenient. All right, all right, Harry, but for bending the rules, check this out. Costco sells a pallet of 48, 40 bottles, 16.9, fluid ounce packs, 32,448 fluid ounces or 253 gallons. Sip, sip, baby. In the UK, there are three types of bottled water. Firstly, we have natural mineral water. For something to class as natural mineral water in the UK, the source must be named. For example, this Volvic says it came from Clairvic Spring. It must have a consistent mineral composition and there are some permitted treatments for the water. Then we have spring water. For spring water, the source must also be named. You can see here, this one is from Oakwood Spring, but any treatments can be carried out on the water. Anything else is just labeled as bottled drinking water. I actually really struggled to find anything that was just labeled as bottled drinking water today. In the UK, you pretty much only drink mineral water or spring water. It's actually against the law to mislead consumers about the origins of bottled drinking water. It'd be really funny to go to prison because you lied on a water bottle. Embarrassing. In the US, we have seven different categories. Let's get that list on screen. First, mineral water. These two examples over here. Mineral water comes from an underground source and has at least 250 parts per million PPMs of total dissolved solids. These are the minerals of mineral water and the minerals are natural, not added later. Next, spring water. These two guys right here. These are waters from an underground formation that flow to the surface naturally. The water must be collected at the spring or by tapping into the formation, feeding the spring. And third is purified water, which is water that's been put through a purification process, duh, and sometimes goes by distilled water. In the US, bottled water brands don't have to disclose the source info, perhaps so the brands can advertise their product to create the illusion it's from the mountains or a spring when it's actually not. Who knows? There's also a federal standard that if the water is from a public drinking source, the label must say from a community water system or from a municipal source. Furthermore, companies are required to provide some quality info and also add contact info if consumers want to reach out and obtain their own additional information. Thank you for calling Niagara Bottling. All of our representatives are still assisting other callers. I just leave a message. If you would like to leave a message, press one now. Hi there. My name is Joe Avella. I am the co-producer and co-host of the award-winning series Food Wars and I'm calling about your purified water from Sprouts Farmers Market. I'm calling specifically to ask uh, the source of this water, if it is from a municipal or community water source, or if it is in fact any sort of spring or mineral water. If you could have someone call me back, please, and just give me some basic information about where the Sprouts Farmers Market Purify Water originated from, that would be great. My phone number, please call me back with any information, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much and goodbye. The taste of water comes from its mineral content, which either occurs naturally or is sometimes added during processing. Yes, water does have a taste. Each water source has a unique mineral content and therefore a unique taste. Mineral content is measured by a water's TDS or total dissolved solids. According to a 2013 study, the minerals that have the most effect on water's taste are bicarbonate, sulfate, calcium, and magnesium. Can we actually detect the levels of minerals or taste in bottled water? Harry and I, and also Food Wars bottled water expert Nico in NYC want to find out. Here are five bottled waters of various mineral content. I'm gonna taste all five and see if I can place them in order of minerality, mineraliness? Fiji. All right, let's do Dasani. Dasani, you can't get this in the UK, more on that later. 
might have to come back to this. These are really close. I think Aquafina has the least amount of minerals. I'm gonna guess that. Aquafina. Oh, okay. Evian. Am I tasting minerals or am I tasting plastic? A smooth water. I think Evian and Voss probably have the most amount of minerals. I hate these caps, I'm so sorry. I know they're better for the environment, but they're so annoying. That tastes more minerally, I would, if I had to guess immediately. I'll put that in front of Evian in terms of most minerals, fewest minerals. Boss. This is the expensive stuff, right? Yeah, it's minerally. It's minerally stuff. I think this is the most minerally one. Poland Spring is somewhere in the middle. Highland Spring. Not getting a ton of, uh, a ton of TDS from that one. Actually, maybe that does have more minerals in it than... Yeah, okay. How about the Fiji? Fancy water. Maybe slightly more minerally than the Highland. Then we're gonna go this one. Where's this? What's happening here? What's going on? I think Fiji might be... Maybe Fiji's first. This is my this is my choice. Least minerals to most. I think the more expensive waters might have more minerals. Slight differences. It is possible that my mind's playing tricks on me and um, they're all the same. I don't know. So I think what I was assuming is that higher mineral content would actually mean more of a taste, but it seems like that might not be the case. Just boss and fiji are switched. <gasps> oh, perfect. So this is the correct order. Not too bad. Dasani, what was it? Dasani is 28. Okay, pretty low. Yeah, that's... Voss. Voss is 49. Okay, Fiji. 193. Okay, Evian. 485. Aquafina. 4. Oh! <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, no way. Uh, so, also so, wrong. so this one, this one has not, so this is the nothing one. I think it might be the microplastics. <laughs> Please don't sue us, I'm kidding. Turns out that the actual order is Evian way out in the lead in terms of their mineral content. Then it was Fiji water, then Highland Spring, then Volvic, and actually by far the least mineral content was Voss. I guess mineral content doesn't always mean a stronger flavor. One thing I'm curious about is how the mineral content of our bottled water compares to our tap water. Here in London, our tap water contains an average of 293 parts per million when it comes to the total dissolved solids. London tap water is also considered to be quite hard water, generally because the amount of calcium is quite high. According to visitlondon.com, who I'm sure don't have any bias whatsoever, London tap water is considered to be some of the best in the world. Our NYC tap water's hardness is at 65 ppm. Not as hard, but ours does have the distinction of containing tiny microscopic shrimp called cope pods. They're added to clear the water of mosquito larvae, which means our water is also not kosher. That is so funny. The tap water isn't kosher in New York City. That is ridiculous. Microscopic shrimp? I don't know, is that normal? Is that anywhere else? I've never heard of that. I've heard that they do that in like wine sometimes. You can have those little shrimp bits in wine, which means it's not vegan or kosher, but water? I mean, you can't be having non-kosher water, surely. LA's water on average has 127 ppm. Of course, the water here is tested and safe to drink, but this does not account for plumbing or treatment devices, which can be an issue. The tap water in Flint, Michigan became a national news story due to the lead contaminated tap water from the decaying infrastructure of old pipes. This is not an isolated incident. One recent study found in Chicago an estimated 68% of children younger than six are exposed to lead contaminated drinking water and then assuming also the adults. As well as mineral content, the acidity of water can have an effect on the flavor. Acidity is measured on the pH scale, which varies from 0 to 14, 7 being neutral. Below 7 is considered acidic, and above 7 is considered alkaline. Water can become alkaline naturally by the inclusion of various minerals, including calcium, potassium, magnesium, or iron, or sometimes it can just be added later in processing. A 2020 study on mice found that alkaline water did improve DNA aging markers. So you know what that means. And as alkaline water as alkaline as it claims, over here are a few top-selling alkaline waters and 
I got some pH test strips, baby. We're gonna test how alkaline these are compared to Aquafina, which should be neutral, and see if they are as advertised. Let's do it. I'll do the same in the UK and compare it to a popular brand, Volvic. But first. This is 9.5. Two seconds, they said. One, two. Does that look like it's in between these two? Interesting. What are you selling us here? Essentia. We'll start with the alkaline waters. We have two types of active pH. So here we have the, the color scale of what it's supposed to look like. So I'd say this first active water is pretty close towards the seven, to be honest. It looks pretty neutral. Like, are we associating black with like, because batteries are alkaline-y, right? I don't know. <laughs> One, two. Also kind of a light brown. Mm. But if it was 9.5, don't you think it'd be obviously between these two? Like it's not close to that at all. At all. I don't think these are as pH or alkaline-y as they advertise, Yuli. This is the second version of the active pH 9. This water claims to have a pH of 9. Looking at the strip, that might be slightly overselling it, but I'd still say that's kind of looking like a bit more of an 8 rather than a 9. Another, another one. Pretty orange to me, y'all. Here we have the Aqua Carpatica. It's actually much more towards the eight or nine level. This should be um, like the lowest of all of them. This is the control. One, two, so there, so the test does work. And then finally we have the Volvic. Now on the bottle, the Volvic actually claims to be seven. So it claims to be neutral. That seems broadly fair, although you could also argue that that's pushing more towards the eight mark as well. Those are our results, I don't know. Maybe you can do more accurate testing, but just a quick wipe down like this might be closer to nine. These two are not. And compared to this one, the test works enough to tell you that. This one that says 9.5 on it or higher is drastically more alkaline-y, according to this test, than these two, which are claiming, this is claiming 9.5, so it should be the same as this one, it's not. This one's 8.4, like one alkaline-y, and it's pretty close to this one. So if anything, I think this one might be, uh, telling tales, but you know, do your own research. I will say despite the claims these are making, there isn't that noticeable a difference based on the testing that we've just done. Our two most alkaline ones would be this one and this one, whereas these two are pretty neutral. The price of a bottle of water in the US has a wide range with generic bottles like this one, the signature select from Vons costing a dollar per liter or the more premium brands like Evian costing $2.49 or Fiji costing $2.88 per 1.5 liters. Note. This should be bigger. Breaking down the average of the three, it's about $1.53 per liter. Similarly, in the UK, with three brands at slightly different price points, we pay an average of £1.90 for 1.5 litres. In terms of price per litre, that would be £1.26, so the average is pretty close in both countries. But the real price difference can be found literally in the water aisle. Just look at this wildly absurd price difference among water brand selections. This one caught my eye at CVS, where an Arrowhead three liter water bottle costs $2.39. And right next to it is a six pack of Fiji 500 milliliter water bottles, so also three liters in total, $8.99. That's a 276% price increase. At our local Tesco's, we found this 12 pack of Tesco's own brand Elmhurst water, and it cost just £1.95. That's a cost of around 32 pence per liter. Compare that to the six pack of 1.5 liter Evian bottles. This costs £5.50, which is roughly 61 pence per liter, so effectively double the price. It must be about the quality of the product, right? Well, take the popular brand, Voss. In the UK, it's £2.50 for one of these 800 ml bottles. It's $4.15 for a bottle in the US. So pound for pound, one of the most expensive waters on the market. But how does it taste compared to other brands? Here in front of me, we have two identical Voss water bottles. One is filled with premium Voss water. Also, the other one is filled with Pure Life, a more uh, cost-effective, some would say generic brand of water. Can I taste the difference? Can I pick out which is Voss and which is Pure Life? Let's find out right now. All right, number one. It's water. Slightly like minerally taste. Although based off of my earlier tastings, I'm realizing that that doesn't always mean 
a high dissolved solids content, but I would still describe that as like a minerally taste. So Natalie, my production assistant, just emptied out this Voss bottle and put back a water that could be Voss or it could be something else. So we're gonna see if drinking it from the glass bottle makes me think that it's Voss. And now we're gonna get our second water poured into this bottle. <laughs> this is such a complicated, a complicated test. Number two. Very similar waters. Okay. That's Voss. Is this the Voss one? Whoa! That's cool. This one taste. This one has like more of a taste to it. I'm associating a blank flavored water with being nothing, whereas one that has more of a flavor to it, the assumption is like, oh, it must be from a natural spring. I don't think this one is Voss. I think the first one was actual Voss water. Am I wrong? Yeah! I needed a win. I needed a win so bad today. <laughs> I will say, drinking water from a glass just really does make it a more pleasant water drinking experience. Cause what is this, Aquafina? That's Poland Spring. Poland Spring, okay. It really does just make it nice and cool and pleasant to drink. So I do like these glass bottles. Based on the fact that I tasted Voss earlier, I'd say this one reminds me slightly more of Voss, but the difference is pretty minimal. So I'll say this is the Voss and this is maybe a slightly cheaper one. They're both Voss. Both of us, okay. <laughs> I've been slightly done by the crew here. It was the same water. Cheeky, cheeky buggers. Although now I'm really glad I didn't say that they were vastly different. <laughs> Sometimes the price of water is location specific. Consider the price difference at the airport. A Dasani one liter in a US grocery store is around $2.35. Whereas in the airport, I found the same bottle of water for $5.69. 149% increase. Shame on you, airport. It's not just at the airport either. The Independent recently reported that London restaurants have been raising the price of their bottles of water, with some of them charging as much as seven to 12 pounds for a bottle. One high-end London restaurant was reportedly even selling water for 60 pounds. That's too much. That's absurd. It wasn't disclosed exactly which water was being priced at 60 pounds, but I'm pretty sure it's safe to assume it wasn't a 98 liter bottle of Evian. Bottled water has seen a sharp price increase recently. For perspective, between 2010 and 2021, a gallon of bottled water on average rose 10 cents, or around 8.8% over 11 years. Compare that to last year, in 2023, when over 52 weeks ending in December, the average bottled water price per unit increased over 9.1%. In the UK, the annual inflation of water measured in February 2024 was 10%. It turns out we drink a lot of bottled water in the UK. In 2022, the UK consumed 2.8 billion litres of bottled water at 740 million gallons, or roughly 11 gallons a year per person. Bottled water makes up 18% of the non-alcoholic beverage market in the UK. That same year, the US consumed 15.9 billion gallons. Now we do have a lot more people here, so it works out to roughly 46.5 gallons per person. Bottled water accounted for 25% of beverage consumption in the US, making it the most popular beverage. I am in the wrong business. Aquafina, call me. I will do an ad for you. Let's do it. In fact, Americans purchase 50 billion water bottles a year, averaging 13 bottles a month per person. According to Amazon, the best-selling pack of still water bottles in the UK is Aqua Carpatica. Although apparently on Amazon, this will set you back £10.99, which seems like an awful lot. In the US, it's a liquid death eight pack of 19.2 fluid ounce cans for $12.47. Here are some of the bottled water brands in the UK that you don't have in the US. And here are a lot of the brands native to the US you probably won't find in the UK. We'll start with three of the best-selling water brands in the UK. We have Volvic, Highland Spring and Buxton. Volvic mineral water is actually sourced in France and sold across many countries, including the UK. Apparently, Volvic is filtered through layers of volcanic rock before being extracted from a depth of 90 meters, giving it a unique taste. It's also got a pretty neutral pH, it's around the seven mark. I don't know why, but Volvic probably wouldn't be the one that I would target in a supermarket if I just wanted a bottle of water. Volvic also offers a large range of flavored water. We've got a few of them here today, including this touch of fruit watermelon, touch of strawberry, touch of mango passion, that's passion fruit, not just like a really passionate mango, and touch of apple and blackcurrant. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not crazy about flavored water as a concept, particularly when it comes to still water. I'll give strawberry a try. It's been a while since I've tried just like a flavored water. 
I think if I want a fruity, but kind of watery, refreshing beverage, I'm still just gonna opt for squash. The texture's always just a bit weird as well. It's like slightly on the slimy side, I find, when you get water, but you add like the sweetness to it. There are a lot of people who love them. I'm sorry, just not for me. Of our top water brands in the US, these two are water products created by existing big beverage companies. This one is Aquafina. It's a PepsiCo product and, in fact, from a public water source. No volcanoes here. Aquafina's site boasts that its purification process is what differentiates its water from the competitors. It includes something called reverse osmosis. So it's pure water, pure taste, purified by reverse osmosis. So they're making it perfectly clear this is not from a spring. This is water that was purified. Next up, we have Highland Spring. As the name suggests, it's from the Scottish Highlands, the Ochil Hills, to be precise. This one gets filtered for 15 years through ancient basalt rock. Um, 15 years of filtration versus Volvic 6. Volvic's got to up their game. Also pretty good. I feel like branding is good here. Like, you think of Highlands, you think of the rolling hills, verdant landscape, and fresh babbling brooks filled with delicious Highland Spring water. I don't know, for me it just conjures up nicer images. And I think, yeah, Highland Spring is probably one of my preferred brands. Then there's Dasani, which is a Coca-Cola product, launched in 1999 to compete with Aquafina. It is sourced from municipal water supplies around the US. Because of this, it is also classified as purified water. Yeah, this definitely tastes more minerally. So clearly the name of the game for both these brands is being purified water. This water is Purified, drink it, it's purified. Buxton is another popular UK brand. It's from the East Midlands town of the same name. They get bonus points because they haven't got those annoying attached caps. It's a good water. Buxton was actually acquired by Nestle in 1992, but it's still owned and manufactured by the UK arm of Nestle. So we're gonna count this as a British brand for the purposes of the exclusives. All of these land pretty neutrally on the pH scale as well. I think Buxton's around 7.4. Highland Spring around 7.8. So in general, it seems like the UK natural waters pretty neutral. Then of course, another incredibly popular brand in the US, which you cannot get is Poland Spring, owned by Blue Triton, which I've never heard of. And it's spring water from Poland, Maine. And it is actually from a source in the States. Finally, spring water. Anyway, couldn't get it for the time of filming this. And the label should say 100% spring water on it. Looking at some other exclusive UK brands, here we have Aquapura. Here we have a can of Northumbria spring water. Canned water is something that's kind of new to the UK. It's really only become popular in the last few years. The brand boasts that it's from the land of the far horizons. Northumbria is way up north. It's kind of towards the border of Scotland. I just feel like when I drink water out of a can, it does have like a slightly different taste to a plastic bottle. Might mean that we're missing out on all those delicious microplastics. So it has higher levels of calcium and magnesium compared to other ones as well. Delicious, delicious calcium. This one is Acti pH or Active, I guess. This one's brand focuses around it being an alkaline water and also ionized. Nine plus on the bottle refers to the fact that it's a nine plus pH level, which does put it in the alkaline category. When we tested it, it didn't actually seem to be that alkaline though. So maybe they could go even harder when it comes to the pH. It's a water from Shropshire. Give it a quick try. You can taste those electrolytes and ions clearly. It's a great noise as well. Then we have another canned water, Cano water in this case. They're going for a very minimalist branding, very plain white can. This one comes all the way from the Austrian Alps, apparently, straight off a glacier and into this can. I'd say the only one that maybe stood out as slightly different was actually the active water, which definitely had kind of a stronger mineral flavor to it compared to a lot of the standard bottled waters. I think the way a lot of these rely on geography when it comes to their branding is actually a bit of a clue to Brit's consumer habits. I think particularly people from the north have a stronger sense of cultural identity. So maybe if you're from Cumbria, you're going to have a pretty strong attachment to your aqua pura. Thankfully, the less popular bottled water brands in the US are real spring water. Here is just a few. There are so many. Uh, down here, we have Crystal Geyser, which is mineral water sourced from springs primarily in Napa and Sonoma, California. Ooh, a little Cali water, Yuli. What do you think of that? Huh? Now, Arrowhead is mountain spring water sourced from multiple springs in California, Colorado, and British Columbia. Pretty similar. I bet that was probably the same place where they get this in California, I think. Yeah. This one, ladies and gentlemen, Waikiki. I don't know how to pronounce this. I don't have time because it's water from Hawaii. Yo, volcanoes filtered this. 
It's gonna taste all like volcano-y. Naturally alkaline. Deep water well. They went deep for this one. That's a really good one. It's a great sip. All right, we also got Just Water, our first boxed water of the video. And it is spring water from the Adirondack Mountains in New York. And this thing's like bursting. Like it feels like it's just gonna rip open. That's yeah, good. I like it from the box. If we're just going on vibe, I think I like the Hawaii one the best. It's like, yeah, it's from Hawaii, whatever, Hawaii, volcanoes, you get it. But I mean, I want, I want, to, I want to show allegiance to the Cali water. Uh, there's a bunch of other brands you can get. It seems like a lot of the waters are somewhat regional. So maybe that's something to do with why we couldn't get them here in uh, California. Down here, we also have a bunch of purified waters that also emphasize hydration and electrolytes, just to name a few. Life water and core. Life water is purified with electrolytes added. Whole body hydration. Look, I love to be hydrated. We're getting hydrated today, all right? Of all the food wars we've done, with the exception of the coffee ones, this one might generate the most pee. It's fun, right? But I don't know what we're adding stuff. Can you taste electrolytes? I, I think of electrolytes when I think of, you know, Gatorade and Propel, like, Core. This one, oh my God, you see this suddenly everywhere. There's something about this, I just don't like the look of it. I don't like the shape. I don't like, it's like, it seems extra plastic. Like, look at this cap. Look at the, why is the cap this big? Made from recycled plastic. Okay, but maybe we didn't recycle so much plastic if we used a lot less. Have we crunched the numbers on that core? We just made a less plastic, wasteful bottle. Be better than just, and also still use recycled plastic. Core, are you watching? Sim tasting the difference, but. I don't know if this is what I want to be drinking. I think I'd be more in line to like having one of these. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. And again, it could just be like my my existing biases, but I like the Crystal Geyser. Arrowhead was nice. I think I like the Hawaiian one the best. But if I had to pick, I'd pick the Just Water because good on you guys for going paper. It feels like it's better for the environment. I'm just a guy talking. If anyone wants to go into the comments and explain to me why it's not, feel free. Another thing to point out is that most UK supermarkets will also have their own brand when it comes to bottled water. We have a couple today, including the Marks and Spencer's own brand. This one is bottled at a source in Scotland and claims to be filtered through volcanic rock. And we have the Tesco own one, which is Elmhurst branded natural mineral water. I'm sorry, these caps are so bad. Is the logic that people were throwing caps away and not recycling them and this encourages people to recycle more, maybe? But it just makes the act of drinking water really hard. Makes me feel like a granddad yelling at the newfangled water caps that they're forcing on us. Also in the US, a lot of our grocery chains, outlets, whatever, have their own brands of water. Here's just a few that I was able to find. Target brand has their good and gather. Reverse osmosis, it's popular. First metal, first metal one. I like that they went aluminum, good for them. Doesn't taste metallic-y, very good. 7-Eleven, purified water, the seven selects. And next to it, popular grocery chain in Los Angeles and probably somewhere else in the country, Vons. Shout out to Vons. Signature Select. Now, I don't know if this is an official Walgreens brand or Walgreens generic brand. Literally got this on the way over here. Could put that on the screen. But real quick, Walgreens all had the nice exclamation point water. These are all purified waters, all taste exactly the same. This is really smart for these grocery chains, these stores to do these. People aren't picky with water, I certainly am not. If you get any purified water, just get this. When it comes to my favorites, I actually drink a lot more fizzy water or sparkling water, and so I think my brand allegiances are stronger there than compared to still water. For example, I actually really like the Buxton sparkling water. I think it's got a good level of bubblage. From my favorites, I would say overall, I think I like the Hawaiian water, like just water, the box water, all right? They're literally selling us water. So it's a little ridiculous that I'm paying a premium for bottled water that comes out of my tap. Bottled water in the UK is regulated by local authorities who make sure that the water meets before mentioned standards for things like the labeling requirements and also the water quality. They perform ongoing checks on things like chemical and microbiological limits, as well as checking for things like radioactive substances. In the US, our bottled water is regulated by the FDA. It oversees the labeling, as mentioned earlier, and also the quality of the water. The FDA has set a maximum level of contaminants allowed in bottled water. The standards for contaminants between the EPA, which monitors public drinking water, and the FDA do differ. One distinction is the EPA's limits for lead in water, which is set at 15 parts per billion, whereas the FDA, it's five parts per billion. 
Uh, assuming this is because water travels through lead pipes, so there's some leeway there. One contaminant you might have heard a lot about recently in the news is microplastics and nanoplastics. A recent study found that on average, one liter of bottled water contained 240,000 pieces of plastic, 90% of which were nanoplastics. That amount was 10 to 100 times more when compared to previous studies. The study identified some of the plastics detected, including polyethylene terephthalate, or PET. PET is what they use to make the bottles that we drink from, but they also found polyamide and polystyrene, which are used to purify water. Not so pure after all, maybe. Bottled water versus tap water has been an ongoing battle, with some bottled water brands trying to position themselves as superior in the eyes of the consumer. For instance, in 2006, Fiji Water ran a national advertisement campaign taking a dig at the city of Cleveland. The ad campaign stated, quote, the label says Fiji because it's not bottled in Cleveland. Cleveland did not appreciate being the butt of the joke and responded by testing Fiji water and found 6.31 micrograms of arsenic per liter in the Fiji bottle and no arsenic in Cleveland's tap water. Not a good look, Fiji. In the UK back in 2004, Dasani water was pulled from shelves just five weeks after it was launched. Pretty much all the UK brands we've covered in this episode are either spring or mineral water, and the expectation is that they are from natural sources, they're purified in places like volcanoes or mountains, and might contain minerals which aren't usually found in tap water, which is why you pay for them, right? The news broke that Dasani was basically just treated to tap water and there was huge backlash. A short time later, all Dasani water was recalled from UK shelves after it was discovered to have above legal limits of bromate, which is a possible carcinogen. I'm gonna be honest, this was in 2004, which is slightly before the time I was really aware of what was happening in the bottled water world. I do find it funny that it's very much still on sale in the US, even if it doesn't have the best reputation. I just think it really exemplifies the differences in ingredients, but also in expectation when it comes to bottled water in the US and the UK. Let's compare the average mineral content of each country's bottled water. We're looking at the six most common substances, which are bicarbonate, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and sulfates. Here's a breakdown of the UK's average amounts. And here's how the average US bottled water mineral content breaks down. Broadly speaking, UK bottled still water contains more bicarbonate, calcium, magnesium, and sodium. Whereas the US water contains much more potassium and sulfates. We're talking trace amounts of these minerals, parts per million here. And that cannot be seen with the naked eye, and account mostly for taste. For instance, the recommended daily calcium intake for an adult is 1,000 milligrams or one gram. A liter of our water in the UK has around 55 milligrams, whereas the US would just have 12. To reach your daily calcium intake in the UK, you'd need to consume around 18 liters of water. And in the US, that would be around the 83 liter mark. Maybe just stick to milk if you wanna get your daily calcium. But minerals like magnesium are great for digestion. A 2017 study found that drinking mineral water with magnesium and sodium sulfates help relieve constipation and increase bowel movements. How often do I buy or drink bottled water? Uh, I rarely buy it. Got that Brita filter at home. If I was to buy water out and about, I would look for aluminum or paper, seemingly better for the environment. And I, when I do buy bottled water, cheapest bottle, I don't care. I don't buy bottled water that often on average. It's partly due to an environmental concern. I try and reuse bottles where I can. But also, I think if I'm out and about and buying a drink, I want more of a treat beverage, so I'm more likely to go for a juice or a fizzy drink. I am a water purchaser, I will admit that. I don't buy individual bottles, I buy like those two gallon jugs. I guess that's less plastic, it's still bad, but I just really don't love the taste of my tap water. I did grow up drinking bottled water. My family was nervous to give us tap water with good reason. We've definitely got precedent here in the United States to be a little bit wary of what's in our tap water. I think the process for most Brits when picking a brand will be to look at maybe the origin, to maybe look at the mineral content, but I don't think it means that much. I think it's more a question of branding, brand loyalties, geographical loyalties as well. I feel like people have a brand loyalty that has more to do with what that brand would potentially say about them. I feel like Evian was the first popular, or at least I remember in the late 80s, early 90s, suddenly there's Evian water. Oh my God, it's from Europe, I think. Mountains, fresh, better than horrible tap water. I'm sure it's not. And the bottle water that you see me drinking is the absolute cheapest. I'm thirsty, I need water, I feel bad, I'm probably hungover. The cheapest, glug, 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 I don't care. I do typically buy Poland Spring or Deer Park. Those are like my preferred waters to buy. I'm definitely not out here buying Evian or Voss or anything like that. The main reason I don't get a bottle of water is the plastic waste. It's ridiculous at this point. So at home, Brita guy, been Brita filter for 
as long as I can remember and I have a water bottle, makes more sense. Every reusable bottle I have, something I got for free. I don't care what it says on it. It's a vessel for carrying water. Plastic waste for me is a real concern, particularly when it comes to my water, which is again why I will generally try and use a recyclable bottle where I can, or just take my own bottle around, fill it up from a tap. I like tap water in the UK. I do think our London tap water is really good. No qualms about drinking it. So for me, that's a much better and also less harmful to the environment option. I feel like in New York City, it can go either way. For the most part, I feel like most places have tap water and it is free, but certain places don't offer tap water or they charge you for it, or you have to buy one of their premium bottled options, which sucks. Wa water should just be free. Water should be free and that's it.